So hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. How are we all doing? Rocking and rolling free world. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. No trade calls, recommendations, response, or own stuff here for educational purposes only. Sessions are recorded. You get any more recording as soon as it's over. As long as you do it for your own personal use only, nobody will be blocked. Nobody will be banned, and we will all behave as one big happy family. So let's do this, guys. A lot of stuff to uh, to discuss. A lot of stuff to go through. Anybody has anything they want to look at, shoot. If not, I'll go through what I think are the uh, most interesting things going on uh, today. Okay. Now, did anybody take any trades this morning? Okay. So here we're in a situation where not an awful lot has uh, has changed, right? But clearly, despite the fact that equities haven't turned yet it looks like we're in a risk-off environment right so um no big surprise we're more than happy to be short risk going into the weekend and that's still going to be the case today as we said yesterday uh i was gonna sell ym if we traded below these lows looking for a quick move into this area remember can't stress this enough it's not about being aggressive all the time. It's about understanding when it makes sense to be aggressive, right? How many times have you guys seen me <clears throat> not fade a move, kind of go with a breakout? Hands up. Not a lot, right? It's not, it's fairly rare. But when I do set something up like that, it tends to be fairly high odds. And you see how quickly the acceleration came, right? Very, very quick. These are high odds trades. So right now, well, who can tell me what was the other thing we said to do yesterday if we rallied up into the close? Exactly. We said if you're looking at stats, if you're looking at history, this is one of the most bearish expiration cycles, and we would be selling the close to buy back the open lower. Does that make sense? Everybody remember? So you're looking into the end of the day, you're selling the close to buy back the open. We're still not into the open yet, but you could have easily taken some profit or you could still be holding. I still think today should be flat to down day. We'll have to see, but again, look at these things, right? It's, it's, it's important to do your homework. You see how many times when we look at something, when we talk about stuff, it plays out like that. It's not because we're particularly smart. It's simply because we know location, we've done our homework. So we know this is a key point. We know that the Dow's been trading weak. It's been trading in a very technical manner. So it makes sense that if we break, we'll move down aggressively as a lot of people will get flushed. Also, we've done our homework and we know into Feb expiration, you sell the close for a move back lower, right? It doesn't always have to happen, but, you know, these things tend to play out. So, and as you see, that's the case across the board. NASDAQ, uh, YM, ES, back down, back down, back down. The ramp in the, into the close was a beautiful little selling opportunity, okay? Now... US, uh, Nikkei is still holding heavy. I still think there's high odds that this is going to come back down into these levels. No real change in outlook there. And also, failure on the DAX, still expect this to come back lower. What is the other thing we've been talking about? Let's see if Will can catch this. We've been talking about another dynamic a lot more this year about something that we look to do into inventory. Who, can, who remembers? Again, you have to pay attention. If not, there's no point of hanging around in the sessions, right? We've been talking about that every single time recently, the move into inventories has been a fade, right? Fade the move, fade the reaction. Exactly, Eric, right? Very high odds play. So you see this 
we rally back up into the inventory, the number, and then bam, we're back down. Does it mean that you have to aggressively fade the ramp up? No, but look, even on a 15 minute chart, negative close at highs, short stop above these highs, you're getting paid. You don't wanna be that aggressive on a 15 minute close, well, you wait for the 30 minute close. Short, stop above those highs, you get paid. You don't like the 30 minute chart, you look at the one hour chart. Short, stop above those highs, you get paid, right? You think that's too aggressive? Four hour chart. Short, four hour close, stop above these highs, you get paid. You see what I mean? It, it, again, the, the, no, no excuse, right? These setups are really, really nice and they're playing out very nicely and you've got plenty of opportunity to trade these if, you, if you're paying attention, right? So you see, <laughs> even though the month has been choppy, as we were discussing, there, there's plenty of opportunity out there. But of course, if you get stuck and you get a bug up your butt saying, I can only trade Bund, I can only trade Swissy, I can only do this, well, you're gonna be stuck, right? But if you're an open mind and you're looking at all the charts, looking for opportunity, there, there's stuff to do, right? So gold still accelerating higher. Again, we expect this to come right back up. Our, our targets are, are higher up into those uh, uh, 16, um, 50s and 1670s. But you know this trade is no edge to fade here, no surprise. The news flow isn't getting any better on the coronavirus and you'd expect all these things, all the risk off plays to continue to play in, uh, in our, our direction, right? It really depends, Mr. Deadlift, it really depends. But here, the other interesting thing to watch today is first of all, right, is uh, Euro gonna make it and close positive on the week because it's doing a really good job of trying to hold this 108. Now that we've stabilized and we're no longer in kind of like a, a die mode where there's no bid coming in, I'm a lot more confident looking at this here, this low at 0750s. And I think there is extremely good chance or I would not expect us to trade below 1750 for the uh for the month right i think we're, we've started to base and we'll try to base here you see what's trying to play out it's kind of like you could argue it's kind of like of a me megaphone pattern and these things can continue for a while but who's going to tell me what's a megaphone pattern at lows is it bullish or bearish exactly megaphone at lows is bullish mega, mega megaphone pattern at highs is bearish right so i i like i'm starting to like the euro more and more uh so keep an eye on what happens i have no problem getting long even 108 stop below that 0750 or tighter but i prefer the wide stop if i had to hold a bigger position trade but this is starting to look nicer and nicer now i think the really interesting trade if things are going to roll today is the yen potentially right because you're seeing how we're kind of stuck here around with, with with this kind of defense of the 112 mark right and what i've been talking about i discussed it in the vimeo update also if you're looking at these highs what is interesting is that shorts at the 112 stop above those highs you're risking about 25 pips or so so I think this is a real move because of the horrible data out of Japan. But, you know, stranger things have happened. I think if we get equities down 1% or something like that, it's not going to be a big deal. But if you get a very ugly day on equities, like closer to the 2 to 5%, I wouldn't be surprised if yen unwinds this whole ramp we've seen in the past two days. So this is a fairly interesting risk reward trade if it's going to unwind i think again it's exactly the same um 
it's exactly the same trade of that as that long gold or the short equities which are playing out already so if you already have those trades there's really not an awful lot of reason to get extremely aggressive on the yen trade but it, it, it's it's if you're looking for a new setup or new position it's interesting also if you get you can also wait and see if it gets downside traction but you know things are things are interesting does that make sense yeah you're seeing here usd cnh it's stalled you're seeing a couple of interesting things you see how usd cnh has stalled right in inside this trend line we put up yesterday you've got yen stalled at the 112 and you've got euro stalled at the 108 what does that mean well that means that right now we're at extremely interesting development right because what is happening is that you've got everything is kind of stalling and you've got that round number in play on uh, on the dxy right so exactly so so here there's a very good chance that if you're looking at so yen at the 112 euro at the 108 right which are the main components anyways of the dollar index it, it, if if those are going to hold it means the dollar index at 100 is shortable does that make sense and it's exactly the same trade across the board so we'll have to see how this uh, how this plays out today but that is clearly something that is that is that is interesting right is anybody focusing on anything in particular here Well, yeah, sure. Here on, if you're looking at equities, what you would, wh wh which one are you looking at? I mean, they're pretty much all the same. Yeah, sure. I mean, here, what you'd be looking at in this scenario, and again, things haven't been behaving the way they usually behave, but basically you would expect very high odds that today we retest these lows right it would not that's what you would expect nine times out of ten does it have to do that no but that's what you would expect yeah and, and again it's really it's really early but it is it is it's rare right it's uh yeah it's 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 rare but i mean the situation is also the news flow we're going to get you know you're getting i don't know how many cases in iran uh, more cases in south korea i think it's like an extra four or five hundred people from that church are infected now what you saw today apparently there's like three confirmed cases around milan in italy and uh, the, it looks like they've asked those two towns to kind of people to stay at home for 14 days. So you can imagine the, the chaos, right? I looked it up. One town's like about 4,000 people and the other one's like 20,000 or something like that. So it's, it's, it's worrying, right? So um, um, uh, yeah, first case in Lebanon. And again, you don't know. I mean, the issue is all these cases that are coming out. It's just most thing, as you've heard, is people don't even have the a lot of countries aren't even set up to to uh, um, to test people or to quarantine people. So God knows how many uh, how many cases are out there. So I would expect more bad news over the weekend. So definitely I'd be looking to be positioned uh short over the weekend but i fully expect yesterday's uh lows to get tested today it doesn't mean they have to but that's what i would uh that's what i would expect i mean this is a key chart to, to keep an eye out for right we'll have to see what happens here 10-year yield but this is 
not looking pretty, right? This could, you could get a flush if we trade back below here. And yeah, I mean, it's not uncommon to see RTY do funky things, especially on OPEX when the others are heavy. So I, I was not too surprised by the initial strength. I actually sold some out. I think we mentioned it here yesterday that, you know, any sale here is still very interesting because the risk reward is so is so huge. So we'll have to see what's going on here. Now, the issue is what do you want to see happen today and how would you trade this? Well, really, ideally, as we always say, you, you want to have some kind of exposure in case this just falls out of bed. You want to have some in without having to um, to chase, right? So it really it also really depends if you are flat or not, but, you know, we'll have to see. I mean, here pre-market, there's some, uh, you know, as usual, guess what? Um, pretty much everything is down. Just guess what's up. So we've got Alphabet down, AMD down, Amazon down, Apple down, Boeing down, Citigroup down, Deutsche Bank. You know, all the, all the uh, stocks I follow are down pre-market, except for one. Take a wild guess. You got it, Tesla. It's up about six, seven bucks. So <laughs> exactly. So you see that there is reason to the madness. When I'm saying, guys, there are better things to do than try and stay short Tesla. I've seen the movie many, many times before, right? Many, many times before. And, and the silliness is just, it's stupid, right? It's, stu it's stupid, it's stupid, it's stupid, it's stupid, and there's no point trying to get stubborn. There are so many um, even famous uh, investors or people that have actually admitted to just getting losing a lot of uh, of money and sleep over Tesla. There's just no point. There's just really uh, no point. Yeah, sure. I mean, Cosby's trading heavy. That's no surprise. You know, like four or five hundred cases. Uh, announced today. So it's just, there's no point, right? So here, I think in general, what you should see with, I haven't looked at this in ages, but with what's happening and the dollar so strong, I'd expect EEM is getting smashed, right? So yeah, so you see here, remember we talked about this where you had gap up, gap up. So this kind of abandoned baby kind of thing and see how it's trying to recover and now it's getting sold. It's very hard. This is one of the most crowded trades. Uh, if you look at the 2020 outlooks, every single investment house was saying long EEM is the trade of the year. There are a lot of people that are still holding because, right, in general, people are not taking, factoring in the, the fact that the situation could get worse before it gets better. So if the penny drops that EEM, that because, you know, and especially if the dollar keeps on going higher, that's going to be one hell of a bloodbath, really. Not something you want to be, not something you want to be involved in, really. Okay. Yeah, I shorted some yen this morning. Um, yeah, I mean, here, don't forget that we still have, you know, the PMIs were not that bad, right? And today, the focus is going to be in about 40 minutes or so. We've got uh, manufacturing PMIs out of the U.S., and that's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, to see what happens. Now, keep in mind that then next week on Monday, Japan is closed, so they're going into a three-day weekend. So, you know, if you see some funky stuff over the weekend, Japan's closed on Monday. That that could be very interesting action on the on the yen, right? Then next week, we've got IFO to start off the week. We've got UK data. Uh, we got some more US data, but really it's it's a fairly light week. So I would suspect it's still going to be, uh, it's still going to be um, uh, driven by the news flow out of Asia. But I definitely think that the whole, uh, you know, the next, weeks, the next months are going to be absolutely fundamental and very, very interesting with a lot of things to, to focus on, right? A lot of things to focus on.
Okay, so, hey, Tio, how's it going? Yeah, USD CAD, I, I, I still like the, you know, I think this is the, this is the easiest way to look at it and try and filter out the noise, I think. Does this make sense? And I think this is what's trying to play out, right? I think what we had was, uh, are you long? This was a false break. And we're back in the, in the triangle. And when you get these patterns, right, these triangles, people tend to get, I, I'm not interested in the pattern per se, but a lot of people get very, very, um, very, very excited with the breaks, right? And here, essentially, what's happened, well, this is a false break, right? And now it's right back up. So as long as it can hold here, I think the path of least resistance is to clip these stops. And I would expect at that point, if you get through the 134, I'd expect the move to 136 could be very, very quick. Does that make sense? So I think that's the that's still the way I would be I would be looking at 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 CAD. Okay. And yeah, and, and, and I mean similar to if you look at crude, apart from that nice fail into inventories. You see how we're still stuck in this ping pong zone, right? Which we mentioned, which is essentially 50 and 55. And you see here, you got that run up into inventories. You've got the reversal protecting the 55 mark. And here, everything is pointing to a move back down to the 55. Now, clearly, oops. We'll have to see how, how it trades here, right? You see, it looks like somewhere here, you could have a bunch of trend lines, but it looks like it's trying to hold this. You know, you could probably draw, draw it this way. But I expect, especially if we break 52, I'd expect 50 to come quick. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, everything's open on 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 um on Mondays. Just Japan, that's closed, right? So I'll put out the video on on Sunday as usual. Um. I think here it's just a question of watching and seeing how the yeah how what what flows do into the open but I think here what's interesting is that yesterday right if you look at let's get a blank chart but let's go on the Nasdaq. What you're seeing, and I mentioned this on um, on Twitter too, right? We're in that situation where you're always getting the buy the dip crowd is sure that you just buy the opening dip and then we close positive for the day, right? And yesterday you see how they, they stick saved the 10-day moving average. Once again, you see how it keeps on getting stick saved. But we close negative, right? So now the dip buyers are going to have to ask themselves some question. And I think if we can get some traction towards back into these lows, they're going to be a lot less interested in trying to buy the dip ahead of the weekend too. So we're, we're getting, it doesn't have to get it happen today, but we're getting closer and closer to some kind of a, of a flush, right?
think if you like the euro, it's 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 a long here, right? The 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 safest play is to wait for another four hour close above, but you see the four hours closed above and it's still above, right? So the only other thing you can watch is if you want to be more conservative, is the daily close back above the 108, or if you're even more conservative, a positive weekly close. I think, but I think here, depending also on how you trade, especially if you're trading with the tighter stop, it's an interesting setup here. I mean, long here, stop below those lows, you're risking about 25 pips, right? And that, but remember that that's a very, very similar trade to the yen or the gold too, right? But it's just very, very choppy and very, very messy. Do I still have my Russell short on? Yeah, sure. Now, well, it's not moving as, as nicely as I'd want it to move, but it is, it is what it is, right? Okay. It's hard to say because we'll have to see also you've got that um, that data, data point, the PMI coming out 15 minutes after the cash open, but it's one of those days where you wanna see early what's going on. You wanna see how the market reacts, but you saw yesterday how the selling, the selling came in fairly quickly. So yeah, sure, okay. Good question. So you're short the Dow and you're wondering what other targets are to the downside. Well, I think we discussed this yesterday, but you see here how basically the Dow is weaker. It closed below the 10 day moving average here. So I think as long as this descending trend line stays in play, you're looking at a move to retest these lows here, which is around the 2800. Right, so, and that's coming in, that's where the 100 DMA is coming out, but this is that big breakout zone, right? So it really depends how aggressive you wanna be, but again, any rally that holds this, I suspect ultimately ends up down here. Now, shorter term, clearly the, the kind of 28, 80s, 28,900 or so is a very interesting zone because look at here. We spent so much time waffling around here. When we came back down, when we sold back down, that's where we caught a bid. When we broke that, we accelerated lower aggressively. Then this was this level was defended and sold. This is where we got that big rip on that first move down. That's where the bid got caught, right? So you could almost just extend this line. See what I mean? And that's going to be the, the line of the sand for more downside in the sense that, yeah, if, if that area holds it, then you'd expect to see some kind of a bounce to then come down again. But if this breaks early in the day, then it could be a grind lower day. Fridays can be tricky. Remember, Friday's not a super interesting day to um, aggressively fight flows, okay? Sure, Swissy on the daily. Uh, so Swissy on the daily, here we go. It's gonna be a very similar trade as you mentioned on, on, on uh, than Euro, right? So the issue is here. It's stalling of the 50 back. Again, I wouldn't look at this 50 back so much because these are a little bit crappy patterns to fib off it and you tried to get sold here. So I think the fib is not really 
uh, an issue here. You can look at the moving average or that round number. But the question is, you see the pattern on, it's not a particularly interesting pattern. A negative close on the week would be much more interesting. The issue is, is the issue is that it's a similar trade, but does it make sense that if we go back to the normal correlations, you know, and assuming that Swissy short and euro longer similar trades, does it make sense that the euro has a lot more room to run? Because here, basically, you've got a you're, you're shorting, let's say, 98s, and you know the SMB is being active, and they said they're going to intervene, and essentially you go 97, 96 is 95s, right? But this level's held for a really long time, and you know the SMB is going to intervene. And they've said so expressly. Whereas on the euro, this has got a lot more room to run to the upside and also in a far freer manner, if you see what I mean. So I think you could get better bang for your buck on euro, but it's it's a similar trade. It will be very rare that for one of the swings to work and not the other. Okay. Uh, what, what would concern the Euro bears? You mean in terms of technicals? Well, I mean, it depends. The Euro bears are not going to change their mind, right? There's, let me put it this way, okay? Rather than looking at, at, at Euro, let, let's make it even so it's more broad, right? Look, it's the same thing. So if you are bullish DXY, right, which is the inverse of the Euro, right? Does it make sense that you would probably even think that the healthy move down, right? So here, if you're in insanely bullish, let's just fib this move. Even if this came back down here, you would consider it a buy. Does that make sense? Previous resistance should act as support for a new high. That's in line with the 10 day. If this breaks, you'd consider a move back into 98 and the 50 back and the moving average is to be a buy. Does that make sense? So here, what would concern um, a DXY bull? Probably only if we traded back below the 98s, right? In a similar fashion, Euro, what would concern a Euro um, bear? Probably only if we traded back above these the 200, because they'll see anything as a sell opportunity. Does that make sense? So you have to understand that whereas, see why our tone is shifted, right? So look at it this way. The euro had broken above this, and it was coming down. So our base case is this, any retracement, is a swing long, position trade long. Does that make sense? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for it to put in some kind of a base in January and get in a position trade long. Now that this series of higher lows has broken aggressively, there's no swing long here, position trade. You can think about it in terms of fundamentals, but technically any rally here is a sale, right? So the, it's a shift in the way you're looking at it. It's still a long setup, but you should be looking at it with different expectations, right? Yeah, today's going to be a very, very interesting day to see how we close the day because also if you look at... Um, If 
if you look at the Bund, right, this is an extremely important level, right? Because we came into these highs, and now it looks like it's stalling, right? So either today we get more of a continuation, stocks sell off, stocks close on the lows, and that will likely mean that Bund is extending towards that 178 extension. Or equities are going to catch a bid. Uh, Bund is going to put in some kind of a double top, and it'll be interesting to look for a short. Right? As I said, there are a lot of, we're at a key inflection point across the board. And uh, no matter what chart you're looking at is, is very interesting, right, on, on a number of levels. So, so again, this weekly close is going to be super interesting. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. We've got um, basically, what is it saying? Um, UIA, UAE minister, two new corona cases. Yeah, so. Thing is, you don't even know how they're testing, who's testing. But I guess you see how just today we've seen cases out of Italy, out of Iran, out of South Korea, out of UAE, um, et cetera, et cetera. So what are the chances of no new cases over the weekend, right? So it's going to be interesting. So we got about eight minutes of the cash open. No, I wouldn't be looking to get long uh, crude at all here. Not at all. Yeah, you're seeing, I mean, yeah, the ES traded like almost 500K overnight. That's a lot. You know, we had days when we said they're kind of dead days where we traded um, lower than that for the whole day, right? So, yeah. Oh, well, that's been a complete circus, right? So, space, SPSE. This has been another crazy one. So, yeah, I mean, these past days have been crazy. We went... We gapped up about 35%. Then it moved down about 25. Then it ramped up about 46. Then off those lows, you came back down. It's just a mess, right? It's just a complete mess. But the volume is being crazy, super high volume super high volume it's just but you know these are this is what you get at the at the at w w at the very frothy stages of of bull markets when everybody's uh in yolo mode trading on robin hood or zero commission right you just get crazy stuff going on that's just the way it is Well, sure, if you're looking for a short, you much prefer this kind of open on equities. The last thing you wanted to see was a kind of gap down open because you know you're going to get people wanting to buy it. But, I mean, I can't stress this enough. Look at how aggressive, you know, the NASDAQ traded yesterday, right? So basically here, you know, once we started to sell off, it about, a, you know, what was it? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 
in, in 25 minutes or so, basically, you know, we went down. Was it? You know, over 100 points and just like really, really quickly. See, and then the same. So, so here anything can happen, but still the risk of something very violent and ugly is to the downside. It's not to the upside. Right. And, and that's not to say it can't go up, but you have to be, um, you know, you have to be a, a little bit careful. Anything we haven't looked at, anything anybody wants to focus on? Well, I think here, yeah, well, I mean, you have to be very, very careful today because there's clearly um, a lot of headline risk across the board. But, you know, it's looking like anything can happen because it's so early, right? But it's not a day you'd want to fade if things start to get traction. That's the only thing I'm saying. It's not a day where you want to fade moves. You want to fade something that's stalled reversed or something that's going sideways, but you don't want to fade something that's going aggressively higher or lower. It's not the day. Well, my ideal situation, what you want to see today is you want to see everything coming back into whack so you'd want to see everything moving together that's the best that's the best kind of uh signal or thing you could watch out for if you see everything coming back in and trying to move together that's the back best thing is there any trade anybody's looking at anything anybody wants to focus on any chart we've missed so far today Okay. No, it's it's hard, right? Look at that gold. No matter see the problem is no matter how extent you know everybody sees that gold and everybody can see it's uh it's kind of extended, right? And everybody thinks okay, sooner or later you're going to get some kind of a pullback, but the question is who's going to want to play for that pullback into the close and have to hold that over the weekend. So chances are, as you know, any dip is going to continue to get bought, right? So it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy is that when you start to get things, especially risk off moves nobody's going to want to really fade them into the close the earlier on in the day the higher the chance that you get some kind of a reversal but especially on on something like a risk off play into a weekend where you've got risk chances are that 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 asset class for that chart is going to is going to grind all the way to the close okay So let's see, uh, let's see what gives here. Let's see what we get. Okay. Two, one, let's go. Okay, so welcome to the cash open.
Yeah, I mean, th th I think a lot of people are also maybe on the sideline. I have no problem selling the open if you're holding a tight stop. The, a lot of people are, are maybe waiting a little bit for the uh, for the uh, for the data to come out. And sometimes it's tricky when everybody's looking at the, the same situation. But also, if you're looking at Europe, right, everybody was also saying that, you know, the data in Europe and the data in Japan was horrible, right? So there's a lot more chance when if you're playing a structural play on horrible J Japanese data, coronavirus in Japan, everything getting worse in Japan, there you have a lot more incentive to stay short that JPY into the weekend because your case, if if your case is data is bad, coronavirus, etc., that everything is still in line with your base case, so you're not gonna get out of that yen position. Does that make sense? Now, on the other hand, if your position is get short Europe because also data is horrible, etc. Well, what had we had the terrible data uh, on on um, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday or Thursday rather, and then today you've got data which is okay out of Germany, and you've got iPhone on Monday. So you're thinking, well, wait a minute. Right. If you start to see some profit taken, data is not as bad as it is. I, then you might be thinking, OK, well, let me trail my stop a little bit. And after the data print today, some people might be thinking, well, you know, let me take a stab at the long side on euro because data wasn't as bad. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, personally, I, I think as usual, I think Europe is in a far better situation than the euro haters are portraying i think the situation is not great by any means but i think it's not as bad as the die euro die euro crowd is hinting at right so we'll have to see but yeah and the other problem is after such an aggressive move down all it's going to take is somebody over the weekend um to say that yes, they're gonna indeed gonna pe push for fiscal stimulus, and bam, you know what's gonna happen, right? Because here at Euro now, nobody, the only before everybody was waiting to see what the leaks were gonna be out of the ECB, what are the EC, what is the ECB going to do, etc. And here I think you have to give a massive, massive props to Lagarde because what she's done is she's effectively taken the ECB out of the picture. Does that make sense? So she said, I don't want any leaks. I don't want any crap. We've done all we can. We're going to talk about climate change, la la land kind of stuff. Don't bug us anymore. So if you noticed how there's less and less interest for, for what the ECB, because she said, we can't do anything. Get off my back and I'm not going to speculate. So the only thing now, the market's no longer really focused on the ECB, and I think she's done a really good job at shifting focus there. The market is only focused on, am I not, is Draghi going to do more, whatever? No, the market's just thinking, okay, am I going to get anything out of the finance ministers that sounds like the two words which are fiscal stimulus, right? And if I get that, well, buy euros. So... So that's the situation. But I think here, you know, you can make a lot of different arguments, but Trump wants to spend more. Bernie wants to spend more. ECB wants to spend more. European governments sooner or later are going to have to do fiscal stimulus and, and spend more. So what does that mean? That probably means that as, you know, as before people expect, we're going to see some, some inflation. Well, let me rephrase that. We have inflation. It's just it's not the way they measure it, but you know, so that's the risk. But so again, my we were looking for a long euro position, then it started to crumble. We said mm, a little bit more lukewarm about it, not that interesting. Now, interesting again, looking for that 108 to 10750s to be the base and for us to rotate outside of that
Any comments, any questions, anything anybody looks like is looking at anything anybody wants to discuss? Yeah, well, here we've got 10 minutes to the data point. We'll have to see what happens on the um, with flows and on that data point. I think here really what it looks to me like the end of the week is that gold is staying bid. You're probably going to get an unwind of this euro trade, and that means euro higher, Swissy lower. I think crude is going to stay under pressure, and I think equities are going to stay under pressure. Yen could surprise everybody and retrace all that move, but ultimately the situation in Japan is very dire, is very different. When we were looking to short yen, the data wasn't that horrible. When we're looking to short yen, the results back, more results out of that sales tax increase were not out yet. And when we were looking at, they didn't have the coronavirus to deal with. So this picture has changed uh, in, in, in that yen, but I don't mind tactical shorts, but broader picture, I think there are more interesting trades out there, okay? More interesting trades out there. Okay. Yeah, what's interesting is euros, I mean, and the range is being so tight, right? Today, it's already engulfed the previous two days, right? So, it's tricky when we've been doing nothing for so long because the range has become so tight. But you see here on a positive daily close, it's going to take very little for it to engulf these past three days or so. And if it pops a little, then it could end up engulfing like five days or something like that. So it's an interesting location. I think here the way, Mr. Dedler, the way the euro is trading, I like the long at that 108, a little bit of a wider stop, small position, and if it takes off, it'll let it take off. I don't think it's too choppy. It's unlike the yen was at a very defined level. It's too chop choppy for me to really want to try and work that position a lot. I'd rather stay small and and go for the for the for the good for the bigger move. Okay. But you know, there's nothing wrong with with being aggressive around that number if you want to, but I personally think it's a little bit choppy. And it's similar here on the yen here. I wouldn't want to be so active if you traded the short as before. I just want to have a very small position, even smaller than the euro set and forget and see if you can play for an unwind of those past two days. It's not the base case scenario, but that's what you'd be playing for. Okay. Any comments, any questions, anything anybody's looking at? Five minutes to the end of the session. This is the time to ask. Yeah, exactly here. You know, so far, as we said, after that fairly aggressive move we saw yesterday, it is rare to not see a retest of those lows. So that is our base case expectation. What is interesting on the, on the NASDAQ here, you see you've got this low that got defended. 
you've got this low that is coming in just below. Then you have this low that is coming in just below. And then you've got this high, right, that is coming in below. So it's a little bit of a messy zone. But you can bet that there are a lot, a lot, a lot of stops starting to be layered here. And even if we hold on the day, if we take this, I'd expect either a complete flush lower or even if it stabilizes, I'd expect to see um, a long wick like here because you'd expect a lot of people to get flushed here. Does that make sense? And as I said, all things being equal, it, you do not get this kind of action yesterday with the news flow that we've had since the close, which as we said was going to be a sell, the news flow until now. You do not see that without the market trying to take out this low, trying to take out this low, and trying to give a good stab at flushing these stops. Now, if on the data print, etc., it can hold and the data supported, then you could get a sharp reversal and you could even get a low for the day, right? A low for the day into 945.10 and then this sucker starts to rally. But if you get through that and you don't hold, well, then the dynamics change because if we flush, any rally back into the flush zone is a sale. Does that make sense? Okay, good stuff. Uh, no, I'm not going to be uh, adding any shorts on the break because I am uh, lock limit on my positions on the short side. I can't, I can't put anything more on. If not, my risk manager will tap me over the shoulder. Okay. No, I don't have a risk manager. It's me or the or the platform issuing a margin call. <laughs> but I don't have a I don't have a, a risk manager. No, it's just me. But um yeah, I think these days which has a which have a potential to roll, I like personally, I like to have the position on and then let it go. Some people are more active. I mean, there's no right or wrong. But again, remember, I think here that um, so NASDAQ is down about almost 1% for the day. I think if the NASDAQ stays down around plus or minus minus 1%, yen can hover. If this goes, and I said if it's a down 2 to 5%, I'd expect to get paid on the yen shorts too. That's all. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So let's see what we get, guys. It's it should be interesting through the data point. Should be fairly interesting. And um, and again, we'll um, remember. Don't be stubborn. Price will tell you especially here where we're at an inflection point. So a lot of things can happen. Price tends to be very, very clear and tends to do a very, very good job at, at telling you what's going to happen. So on days like today, you have to put your bias aside and let price tell you what it wants to do or what it's doing. And again, have an awesome rest of the day. Have an even better weekend and catch you ready next week to do this all over again. Things are getting interesting. It should be a very interesting year with a lot of interesting opportunities. We'll start to look at some more seasonality plays, and, you know, et cetera. So again, we got elections coming up. Should should be should be interesting. I think the 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 interesting period is just is just starting now. Okay. I'll send out the recording. Have an awesome one, guys. All the best. Take care. Talk to you soon.